Okay, so today is just another one of those jobs while I'm waiting for parts. Uh, so we're going to clean up these carbs. Now the bloke that I bought the bike off uh, said that it was running really lean and then he had to open the jets right up. Um, whether he meant he actually bought new jets or drilled them out, um, I'm not quite sure. Now the reason he thought that it was running lean was uh, air leaks through the uh, butterfly shafts. But if you remember back to the picture of the uh, air filters that I showed you, I'm going to say it was more likely that, the fact that they were pretty much non-existent. So it was just free flowing with no restriction. On top of that, it also replaced the exhaust with, uh, with pea shooters and they flow much more freely. So that would also just increase flow and lean things up even further. So I'm really curious to know what he did with these carbs. Um, and as you can see, they're pretty dirty. So I'm just gonna pull them apart, clean them up, and uh, see what jets he's got in there. It was actually running pretty well, despite the fact the air cleaners were non-existent. Um, it did smell a bit rich on idle, but other than that, like it pulled pretty evenly through all the, uh, through the rev range. There was no flat spots, so I'm not unhappy with the way it was running. And because it was running a bit rich at idle, I'm kind of hoping that when I chuck these pod filters on, it'll still go all right and I won't have to uh, stuff around with it too much. All right, so let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is just separate the two carbs. Um, to do that, we're gonna have to remove the, uh, the choke shaft there and also the crossover pipe here and then take off this bracket and it should just come apart. So we'll do that now. And there we go, the carbs are separated. Okay, so now we've got them separated. Um, I'm gonna take off the top cover. I'll just be careful because there's a diaphragm under there, you don't wanna tear that. All right, and off comes the top cover and the spring. And in here, you've got your diaphragm and your slide. Now to get that out, just place your finger in the middle of the slide and pull it up nice and gently. And out it comes. Okay, you wanna be careful with this diaphragm because if it tears or anything like that, you've gotta replace it. You see you've also got a needle in there uh, and you can take that out just by tipping this upside down and that whole arrangement should fall out. Just place your slide and the diaphragm to the side. Now on these ones, you've got a needle and there's five slots and a little uh, a little E-clip and that sets the height of it. You can adjust the height of that to adjust your mixture. The higher it is, the more fuel you're gonna get. And there's just a plastic uh, stopper for lack of a better word there. So put those aside and that's the top done. Now we wanna remove the bowl. There's nothing wrong with that gasket, I'm just gonna reuse that. All right, and to take the floats out, just get a needle nose, a pair of needle nose pliers, grab the pin, and out she slides, put that aside, and place your floats aside. In there you've got your needle and seat. The needle should just be sitting there and that comes out. Make sure you don't lose that. Place that to the side. Give you a better look at that one. Right there it is there. Place that to the side. And then you can take your seat out. Now some of these have a screen on the back of them that can clog up. That's just a 10 mil spanner. And out comes the seat. There's a small brass washer on it as well, so you want to make sure you don't lose that. 
Uh, this one doesn't have a screen and it's nice and clear anyway. Okay, then you've got your emulsion tube here that stays in. And that's all that we need to do to the body of the carb. Now for the bowl. Inside the bowl, you've got a pilot jet in here. And your main jet is down in there. And to get to that, you take this off. Once again, 10 mil spanner. Take that one off. It's got a uh, brass washer on it as well. Make sure you don't lose that. And then take a flat bladed screwdriver down in there. Uh, this one here, um, I've had to grind the shoulders off it because it wouldn't fit down in there. So get a crappy old screwdriver, grind the shoulders down, make sure the uh, edges are nice and square because you don't want to strip out the, uh, the head of the main jet. And out comes the main jet. Now I am very curious to see what size he's got in here. 130s. And that is the standard main jet size. So unless he's drilled it out, I don't think he's opened anything up. They're not obviously drilled out, but then again, I can't really tell. Oh well, we'll see what size pilot jet he's got in here. I actually think that is smaller than original. Let's see what the book says. So the book says it's supposed to be a 42.5. Oh, it was idling fine, so we'll see how it goes. And it um, ran fine. Okay, so that's, that's as far as I'm going to take the carbies apart. I'm just going to give them a clean up, uh, blow out all the airways and all the fuel the uh, the fuel ways and put it back together. Actually, sorry, before I do that, you've also got the uh, idle mixture screw. The idle mixture screw is this one here. We'll see it, see what position it's in now. So we'll screw it all the way in, count the turns. So that's half, one, it's like one and a tiny bit of a turn out. Alright, so that's got a spring in behind it as well, so just be careful when you're taking that out. And you can see there's a little needle on the end there, just make sure that's clean. And that sits inside of a seat in there, we'll just see if we can get the spring out. There's the spring, put that aside and make sure you don't lose it. Shouldn't be anything else in there that I'm going to lose, no. All right, we'll leave that out and we'll clean it all out. All right, I've given the body a quick clean now. So as I was saying, you want to give all the airways a spray with carb cleaner. And then blow those out. Make sure they're all clear. There's a couple in here as well. You've got uh, the fuel inlet here. You've got plenty of uh, other airways and fuelways in here. Give them all the spray with carb cleaner. Then get the get the air gun in there. And blow them right out. Make sure the emulsion tube's clear. The emulsion tube's also got uh, three fine holes in the side. You want to just look through them and make sure they're clear. These ones are. All right, what else have we got? Uh, that's right, we've got the idle air mixture. Oh, sorry, idle fuel mixture. Top one, whoops. All right, spray them ones out.
Okay, so they're all clean now. And she's nice and clean, so it's ready to go back together. Reassembly is just a reverse of disassembly. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the uh, gasket back on. And we've got the seat, remembering it's got that small brass washer. Now when you're tightening these up, you don't wanna to go too tight. Uh, they are just brass into aluminium, so just give them a little nip. All right, so that's that. Now we go the needle. We just drop the needle into the seat there. And then the floats can go back on. Now obviously they can go on two ways. One way is going to be the complete wrong way. So if you look at the underside of this little tab here, you can see the mark where it sits on the head of the needle there. So that makes it nice and easy. That one goes down. There we go. And that just sits in there. It gets held in when you put the bowl on so it can't come out. All right. So that's that one. Now to put the bowl back together. So you want to spray out the pilot jet hole and that airway and also the main jet hole and your overflow tube. And just give the inside a good spray so to make sure it's nice and clean and blow all of those out with air. All right, and now to reassemble the bowl. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is drop the pilot jet back in. Make sure that's nice and clear as well. Um, I've already cleaned that one and blown it out off camera. Drop that one in. Now do not over tighten these. It's just brass into aluminium so the threads can strip quite easily and you don't want to tear the head out of the, uh, the jet either. So once, once it requires a bit of effort, just give it another little nip up and that's done. Flip it over and drop the main jet back in once again. Make sure that's nice and clear. Nice and clear. I've already sprayed this out and blown it out with air prior. Uh, then you can put the cap back on, making sure you've still got the brass washer. Now we can replace the bowl onto the uh, the body of the carb. Make sure I've got everything, I've got a pilot jet, I've got a main jet. Floats in, pins in. Actually, we'll just measure the float height. Now to measure the float height, you need to take the gasket off or you subtract the uh, width of the gasket. I don't actually know the width of the gasket, so I'm just gonna take it off. Take your vernier calipers with the depth gauge on the bottom. And then just slide that down. Until it's just touching the top of the float bowl. And that is just over 25 mil. And the specs in the book say 25 mil, so that is close enough for me. Okay, so that's the bowl back on. Now for the slide and the uh, needle. So you'll see down in the top of the uh, slide there, there is a small hole. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera. All right, there we go. So we drop that needle down into that hole. There we go. And then the plastic stopper goes in over the top. Okay, so if you look at the top of the, uh, the diaphragm, there's a wider section here, just a little um, protrusion, I guess you'd say. That lines up with the protrusion at the front of the carb here. So the slide only goes back in one way. All right, once we've done that, drop the spring back in. It's the same both ends, so it doesn't matter which way it goes in. Drop the spring in. And on the top of the cap, there is, uh, sorry, inside the top of the cap, there's that little uh, protrusion there. That lines up with the top of the spring. Make sure that's 
on and then before I go doing that the cap only goes on one way as well and then drop that in all right now remember we only want to put two screws in because there's a bracket joining these two together Now for the uh, idle air or idle fuel, I don't, can't even remember which one it is. So the spring drops in, that's the wrong side. The spring drops in. And we drop in the needle. Tighten it all the way home. And then back it off. One, and I'm gonna go one and a half turns because that's what the book recommends. I'll adjust once I've got it on the bike and I'm doing a bit of tuning. All right, and that's the carb cleaned. Right now we'll put them back together. Once again, it's just a reversal of taking them apart. So, choke side to the left. All right, and you've got your, uh, your sink adjustment here. It's got a spring-loaded plunger on the bottom and then your adjustment screw on top. So you're just gonna have to depress the spring-loaded plunger and then put the actuating lever in between the plunger and the adjustment screw. All right, so this can go on two ways. You wanna make sure that this a larger depression here goes towards the uh, air cleaner side of the carbs because the main, uh, sorry, the structural member of the frame has to run down through there. So that gives it a bit of clearance. So we'll just pop that back on. All right, so now we'll put the uh, choke assembly back together. I shouldn't have put this bracket back on because I'm gonna have to pull it off again now uh, to get the choke bar back through. So we'll do that now. All right, and then we'll take the choke bar and slide that back through. Get the first choke actuating lever, place that over the plunger, or sorry, place the fork of that under the plunger and then slide the bar through. All right, now there is uh, notches on this bar where these tighten back up into, so we'll just make sure they line up. All right, and now the choke lever. First we've got the, uh, the plastic bushing. That goes in behind the choke lever like that. And then on. And the screw goes in. Right, now you've also got a pin on here and that lines up with the slot on the choke tube. So before you tighten anything up, make sure they go together. And we'll just replace the throttle bracket. All right, and there you have it. Basic disassembly and cleaning of the carbs of a XS650. As always, if you like what you've seen, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.